I was prompted to run for mayor by uh, a personal sense of duty for the, for the citizens of Duluth. And uh, my platform would be, since there was questions about the platform in the newspaper, my platform will be to run an honest campaign with integrity, transparency, and my first order of business will be to restore relations with the Native American community. And that way we can put things behind us that occurred over the years in the past and to get onto a common prosperity. And those are my intentions if the voters find me qualified. T talk a little bit about who you are, what you do for a living. Uh, I've known right. you as an umpire, softball umpire. That's correct. I've been sports years. officiating for many years. Yeah. I have many small businesses, sole okay. proprietorships. They'll be indicated in the uh, questionnaire that Pete Passy has provided for more, most of the candidates. Okay. Well, our opinion page and the news, what the news side does are, are, are separate things. Separate so entities. Yeah, so mm -hmm. if you could please touch on some of that, I sure would appreciate it. Oh, uh, sure. I just uh, recently uh, completed a four-year project. Uh, there was some property of mine up north that was just sitting idle. So I developed it into a campground exclusively for uh, veterans and uh, enlisted military personnel. And that required an extensive amount of permitting applications mitigation uh, credits for wetlands and it uh, kind of briefed me on what a four-year obligation uh, commitment is all about so and it was hard work a lot of manual labor learned to operate a dozer and a backhoe and all the manual uh, qualifications necessary to develop a campground like that yeah. Go ahead. You mentioned a sense of duty. You felt a sense of personal duty. That's correct. Uh, yeah, even in where, where did that come from? What, what? Uh, even in 1972, when uh, when I enlisted in the service as a volunteer for the draft, during 1970, it was kind of a sense of duty back then, also to present my abilities to the country, and that was it. You're and it the, went on pretty well. You're in the army, or you're in Vietnam? I was in the army. Okay. Yeah. What, what prompted you to, to join the military then, the, the need? Well, there was uh, the draft was in effect back then, but mm -hmm. uh, my draft number wasn't up for another year. So uh, just to, uh, to get in, perform my, my duties for America, and, and then get on. Okay. You grew up here in Duluth? I'm a lifelong resident of Duluth, right Proud on the that. hillside here. <laughs> okay. In fact, before the Duluth News Tribune became automated with their Sunday papers, as uh, high school kids, we used to go down and stick the papers with advertisements for seven dollars an hour or whatever it was. I can't remember, maybe dollar an hour back then. <laughs> and there was a, a group of us that hung around this uh, this area that uh, bonded very well. And we all went down to the newspaper and we stuck newspapers with advertisements. Quite the experience. From I think it was eight in the more eight in the evening till three or four in the morning when all the papers were completed. It was pretty much fun. And then we went up to Twin Ponds and we're proud of our accomplishment and we had money in our pocket. Those were the good days. <laughs> a question of, of style, I guess. Do you see yourself continuing the changes in the direction set by Mayor Don Ness, of course, is stepping aside? Well, he, uh, Don Ness uh, needs to be complimented on his efforts and, uh, and the administration also. They did a fine job. In, uh, in 2008, when they had the financial crisis and um, the health care issues with the, with the city employees and all that, he took care of it very well. And uh, that tradition is something that uh, I'd like to carry on. And uh, he had a good spirit back then, and that's another another asset uh, that uh, I'd like to continue. In what ways would a John Socia mayoral administration be similar and different? Well, uh, my only uh, efforts will be to improve on what has been done in the past. Okay. As uh, any way I can, you got to be a vigilant, a vigilant uh, mayor, constantly looking for improvements in in employment opportunities for the, for the citizens, in business opportunities for the businesses. Constant vigil. You mentioned that you were that you wanted to um, bring relations with the tribe, the Native American the community. Native American. You bet. 
Are you talking about with the casino, or are you talking the about casino is is the issue, the main issue that was. And how would you how would you bring that around? Uh, merely by inviting them to discussions about what has happened, clarifying the issues, making sure that everybody has an understanding of what happened and occurred. And uh, Duluth has lost a lot in uh, severing those communications. I think that it's necessary for us, for Duluth as a city, to again get, a, get, get, get some kind of agreement between the Native American community, community and the citizens. That'll be my priority. Along that same subject, what about the financial loss? How, will, how, how do you think we can make up for that? Uh, I'm thinking it's all in the past. We're going to have to be more efficient and uh, and be uh, more conservative on other issues and policies. Do you and then in the end, we'll be, we'll be self-sustaining. In the end, in my in my opinion, in my view, in my perspective. I think we pretty much are now, but probably. But you, you do consider yourself a fiscal conservative then? And well, there's no affiliation with any parties for my campaign. My sole allegiance will be to the citizens and businesses of Duluth, and that's it. Nothing more. I think if, other, if others yeah. want to endorse me or, or support my campaign I'll, on my merits alone, I'll, I'll welcome it. But other than that, my uh, sole allegiance will be to the citizens and, and businesses. When I said fiscal conservative, I meant more philosophically speaking, your approach to, to money matters, your approach to governing. My whole life has been predicated on being thrifty and efficient with resources. Okay. And that will carry on through anything I do. Looking at the, the rest of the field, it's quite a field of candidates. What, what do you think sets you apart? What makes... Well, uh, I think we're all the same in that uh, we do have a, a specific call to duty for the citizens of Duluth and uh, they're to be commended for their efforts in the candidacy for mayor. And what sets us apart, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I'd have to review their candidacy, their platform, to make that determination. Okay. Uh, going back to the, the financial issues and being fiscally uh, conservative or, or responsible, I guess, mm -hmm. How do you think the city should be spending its money more on core services, or, or do you think the city's doing okay with the way it spends its money now? Uh, specifically, I want to ask about you know road, road work and fixing our streets. Road conditions is always yeah. a platform, along with housing. There's issues there. Uh, people have citizens have concern about individuals coming from out of state areas just to receive the benefits of the housing in this area. That's always been a concern. But the roads, as you can see, they're being maintained very well. Just recently, there's road crews out everywhere. They're doing a hard job. They, do, they don't get enough credit. It's a hard job being a, in a road crew. And uh, the conditions of the roads around here, they require a lot of effort. And these road crews are, are diligent in their efforts and they need to be commended on their, on their progress. How about ongoing uh, road maintenance? How can we fund that? Uh, eventually, the the way that uh, the roads are taken care of should take care of themselves. If they're done well in the first place, they'll last for many years to come, kind of be a self-sustaining self program, in my opinion. You mentioned people coming in from out of town. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Are you seeing that as kind of a public safety issue or as a... Well, uh, you know, it might, be good, it might be good for the tax base here, but the housing around here, it may be federally mandated, so there may be uh, mandates from, from the government or fe federally funded, so there might be mandates from the government that require any uh, any occupancy of uh, of housing in this area by anybody. So I'm not really sure on everything about that, but a little more research on my part will give me a, a, a clearer view of everything. Okay. As long as I brought it up, public safety, do you think uh, Duluth's doing okay with that? Oh, uh, we never have enough of that, <laughs> especially with the issues going on around the world. Uh, security is always an issue, and now that tourism is growing around here, I think more security is probably a better thing to have. Uh, provide with, uh, let's say, uh, enforcement individuals with uh, in plain clothes so that they can walk the grounds of Canal Park or other areas where tourists frequent, and they can be there on the spot, and if necessary, call in for support. 
I know it hasn't been an issue in a while, but there have been talk in the past of privatizing the fire department as a way of saving money. Is that something you've thought of at all? or uh, privatiz Privatization of services in Duluth. Uh, the fire department, I'm not sure. Uh, that's something that I'd have to research more in depth. But I don't see that, uh, t you know, if they're going to start private privatizing the fire department, perhaps they maybe want to start privatizing the police force. It's kind of like a snowball effect. Let's stick with the basics on those uh, those security issues for the citizens. I think are the best way to go. Be funded by Duluth, but there's other privatization areas that Duluth can can possibly take a look at, like maybe hiring private uh, snow removal companies to do side streets and just have the main thoroughfares done by the city of Duluth. That might be an option. And there's other areas that that may be uh, observed for privatization also. Another concern is uh, for, for candidates might be the uh, voter ID requirements. I see there's nothing like that in the books yet. Uh, maybe a referendum might be uh, necessary to, to determine that or delineate any other things like that. So you believe in voter ID? Well, you know, from the, the feedback I've got on my emails, a lot of people are concerned about even out-of-towners coming in and saying they're a citizen, voting for whoever they want. It, it may be a concern, it may be a major concern, but to my knowledge, the 20 to 25,000 voters in the city of Duluth, they have the perspective, they have the intelligence to seek out the right candidate for any position in Duluth. So I'm now confused. So you, you believe in voter ID or you don't believe? That's something that can't be determined by just one individual. Well, but... but my personal opinion? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I received some feedback from somebody the other day at the YMCA. He says, I need an ID card to get in the hospital. I need an ID card to get into the YMCA. I need an ID card for this and that. And why isn't, isn't it required for, for uh, city voting? Or if it is, you know, then uh, maybe that should be reinforced. So my opinion is identification of individuals, especially nowadays with security issues always around, uh, it, it's probably a necessity just for the security of the citizens. Okay, does that answer it for you, John? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a report earlier this year said our library downtown here needs some, some major work. Uh, price tags were in the 30s of millions of dollars. For a new library. New library, refurbishing the old library. What do you think we should, we should do or maybe do nothing? Well, uh, you know, that's another thing that one individual can't really determine. So a lot of feedback is necessary on that. Like, if they're going to determine new property for a library, what's going to happen to the old property? It's going to be beneficial to the citizens. A new library, sure, it would be nice. And the citizens probably are worthy of it. But what's going to happen with the old property? Mm -hmm. Is it fundable? Is it going to be sustainable? All those issues need to be considered. Be nice to have a new library, sure. Be nice to have that one refurbished. But that's just something one person can't determine. No, of course not. But we're we're wondering about your personal well, that's feelings. I mean, as mayor, the way you feel and the way the things you want will play a big role in influencing a lot of people. So that perhaps yes. That's why we ask about all these different issues. That's so. why. Okay. It's wonderful. You touched a little bit on housing. I think the last two years we've held annual housing summits and there's been an identified need, I guess, for workforce housing and affordable housing. Uh, and, and since then we've had some different projects pop up. Uh, is Duluth moving in the right direction? Or are we filling the need or do you not see the need? Or I think uh, the, housing for, uh, the housing need for the lower income people, they're doing a fine job with that. Uh, I see all these housing units occupied by lower income individuals and they're doing fine, and I'm sure that uh, they need to be commended on their efforts. Uh, for middle class and, and other individuals, housing issues aren't that demanding on, on the citizens of Duluth, but the neighborhoods are, and the security of their neighborhoods are providing for, the, for those individuals. Okay. That's all I know about it. Now, there's more more research need to be done on that for me also. Uh, tourism taxes uh, for things like Aquarium, Spirit Mountain. Uh, do you think that's money well spent? 
um, considering where it comes from and tourism taxes. The taxes acquired from the uh, tourist base or That's right. tourist income. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not familiar where their that money is being spent, but as long as it's profitable for the citizens and the businesses, as long as it presents itself as a as a boost for the citizens in the city, then it's fine. Wherever they put it, uh, it that's determined by the council, city council. Mm -hmm. They they determine where the money is going to be spent and for what. Uh, I'd have to research that to, to get more information on it. Uh, next There's year, a lot of things I don't know about, but when the issues come up, you can believe that I'll be in there getting all the information and, uh, and presenting it to the public and, and the administration for review and advisement. Okay. I'm going to say ne next year is a bonding year at the state legislature. I'm not sure if you've thought ahead at all. what. Duluth priority should be. People talk about the, the conversion of the steam plant is maybe one idea uh, for, for some state bonding money. That's a great idea mm -hmm. to have that steam plant self-sustaining. That'd be an asset for the businesses in the, in the city of Duluth, big time. A, the, the steam heat in the city of Duluth could even be expanded to other areas, like maybe some schools in the area or something like that. But that's a big project in itself. And I was witnessing the expansion project of the steam plant in, at UMD, and that's very extensive. Mm -hmm. So extending it in the city of Duluth and, main, and maintaining it, if it can become self-sustaining, that would be big for the city. Heat in the city in the wintertime is big, and steam heat is the best, to my knowledge. <laughs> that's, uh, that's our list of issues. Anyone else have anything? I was just curious, you had mentioned that um, you um, would like to continue the tradition of Mayor Ness's um, the work he's done with some improvements. Um, could you be more specific? What Always trying to improve on what's going on. Always trying to improve. Uh, he's, do he's done the best he can, mm -hmm. and he's done very well in the past eight years. And I don't think he's gotten enough recognition for his efforts. I'm just curious where you think some improvements might uh, be made. Well, that would have to be researched. Uh, you know, there's always areas for improvement. Okay. You know, nothing's perfect. And uh, with the advisement of the administration, we can all get together and say, hey, maybe this needs to be taken or tweaked and taken a better look at. So there's nothing specific. It's just always searching for improvements, constantly keeping a visual to improve, become more efficient, more thrifty with the funds. In closing, uh, John, uh, why should voters support you uh, in the primary and then again in the general election? Well, uh, there's <laughs> certainly some qualifications that need to be presented to the voters, but they're able to see through any scams any candidate has to offer. Yeah, even if my qualifications aren't adequate, the voters are of a higher intellect and they can see that uh, my qualifications may not be adequate, they may be adequate, they may be more than adequate. And it's up to them to determine that. And uh, I can only present my, uh, myself as a candidate, and they can determine uh, uh, who's the best for the city. I have confidence in the voters, whether they uh, select me or not. It's, it's strictly uh, their choice, and uh, for sure they will select the best individual.